Because this is hopefully going to close out the preterism. What I've been covering in the last four uh, videos has been that the foundation of preterism is replacement theology. And replacement theology basically ignores what you're seeing on screen now, the book of Hebrews. And instead, out of jealousy of the Jews and their exclusive position and promises in the past, because of such irrational jealousy, um, most, of, most Christian denominations, starting with Catholicism and uh, Calvinism, and then, of course, most of the rest of them, they're all trying to claim some version of, well, we replace Israel, we take over her promises. At the same time, they, because they're anti-Semitic and because they have that position, they misinterpret, but yet vaguely understand that there is a new covenant for church. Hebrews is the quintessential, how do you want to call it, reconciliation book about the differences in the two covenants, why it changed. All right? So he starts off here talking about angels because the, the reason why church is even existing is because there was this battle with the angels, namely Satan and company, that's encapsulated in Psalm 110, which he's referencing right here to tell you the theme. All right. And Christ won at the cross. That's going to be the focus of Hebrews 2 here. Okay. He won at the cross. See? That's another quote from Psalm 110. <clears throat> this is where I'm getting Operation Footstool. It's my pastor's term, but you can you can you know see where it comes from. Because he beat Satan right now, there's the calling out of church to complete the replacement of Satan's, as it were, kingdom. This is the message that the Calvinists and the Catholics aren't getting because they are so focused on the Jews they are retarded in reading the Bible. And it's really sad because the whole theme of the book of Hebrews is how this text that you're seeing in blue alright, that's what's happening right now. He's, he's saying, you know, this is what's happening. Okay? See? But now we don't yet see everything subjected to him, meaning Christ. In other words, he won at the cross. Now it's Operation Footstool, which is right here. And we don't see that that's actually complete yet. No, it's happening now. We see him who's made a little lower than angels because of the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, so that he can taste death for everyone. Now see, see he says to perfect here, that's teleo. Oh, we just saw that in the last increment. Christ is the end of the law. That's tell us the cognate noun. Tell I always the verb. To perfect means to complete a contract. The contract is Isaiah 53.10. This is what's really going on now. And because it's post-cross, and because it relates to the angels, it has not anything to do with Israel. But if you're all fixated on Israel, then you can't see the better Attic Crichton, one of the key words in the book of Hebrews, you can't see the better covenant, the better promise that's being fulfilled. That's their problem. That's what they don't see. That's why they don't see it. They're looking at the Jews. It's a different group that we replace, not the Jews. And the blue text you have in front of you right now is telling you what's happening right now. It has nothing to do with the Jews. What's confusing to them, because they're anti-Semitic and therefore can't read Bible, so they are perpetually carnal. Even when they use 1 John 1 9, they go back to believing this anti-Semitic idea of replacement theology, so they're, they're still clueless when they read Bible. Because things are different, because things are better now, because they can't see it, they don't know what the spiritual life is. The book of Hebrews is explaining it's a whole different ballgame. They also don't know, 
and can't tell the word play on New Covenant, which starts here. This goes. This is the theme in the book of Hebrews about the New Covenant because they just finished saying in Hebrews 7 that the old is obsoleted. So now he's walking into a, what is the new one? Hebrews 8 through Hebrews 10, 17 is on the New Covenant. The New Covenant was talked about right here in Jeremiah 31. Okay, that's his theme for, for Hebrews 8 through 10. When you're blinded by anti-Semitism in this case, you can't read Bible. Because they're blinded by anti-Semitism, when they look at this, they think that the new covenant in Jeremiah 31 is the only kind of new covenant. So that buttresses their prejudice to start with. Oh, see, here's another verse that proves we replace Israel right here in Hebrews 8. They don't recognize that Hebrews 8 is not to be interpreted outside of the context of Hebrews 2, which is on Psalm 110 and the demons. In other words, Hebrews 8 is explaining, first, this is the actual covenant right here, Hebrews 2. Hebrews 8 is explaining that Christ's new priesthood and everything else that's new about him is going to be used to inaugurate, connect, the new covenant for the Jews in the tribulation and the millennium. So that's why at the end of Hebrews 11, let me just go to 12, scroll up. Because God provided, this is Attic Crytone right here, better. Better meaning a better covenant. Because God provides something better for us so that apart from us, they the Old Testament people, would not be, and it isn't made perfect, it will not be completed. This is a rapture verse right here. He's explaining why the rapture, which is in the context of Hebrews 11, which is the Christ thinking in you, the confidence of glory, he's playing on Colossians 125. That was what we had saw, you know, that I spent a lot of time on in my God Deeds video. Okay. Um... This is mistranslated. This 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 whole translation is completely garbage. Okay, it's saying it's in the pistis the pisomeno who postes is pragmato nela who sublepomeno. Let me show you the Greek. Okay, see, it's in the pistis the pisomeno who postes is pragmato nela who sublepomeno. It's about confident. It's it's about word believed, confidently believed. If you wanted to use the actual, you know, literal. Okay, hypostasis is a nickname for Christ. Pragmaton, trial matters. Elegos, evidence. Ublepomenon, unseen. So the whole trial is about evidence unseen. Okay, it's not faith is the substance of things hoped for. Christ is not a thing. Okay, it isn't assurance is the way they mistranslate it here. The other, the other things say substance. Hypostasis. It's usually translated substance. Here they're saying assurance. No, this is Christ. Not a substance. Not a thing. And it's not your faith. It's the word. The believing is done by people, not things. Okay, this is what they're translating hoped. Okay. It's about confident believings in the word. The word, it's tic-tac-toe. That's a noun paralleled with hypostasis, Christ. And then that's paralleled with trials. Literally, that's what trials means. See, the, the whole translation, as you can see in all the Bibles, is completely off. This is the word for evidence, and this is the word for unseen. So it's about the word, confidently believed, Christ, parallel with word, on trial. Evidence unseen. That's the whole story of our time now in order to complete this. See, we don't see him with all things yet subjected. Yeah, that's happening in Hebrews 11. But we see him now crowned. Yeah, he's up there. We're down here. Alright, so he was completed 
author of your salvation. He's going to pick that, pick this up, the completion. It's translated perfect, but it means to complete. The author of their salvation, that's Hebrews 12, through sufferings. So that's what's happening to us. This is a parallel. This is what happened to him. Now it happens to his bride, his body. Okay? That's a new covenant. So the old covenant, Hebrews 7, is being superseded based on an older covenant exemplified by Melchizedek, which is an older kingdom replacing the demon Psalm 110. And perfection didn't come through the Levitical priesthood. He didn't complete. And Christ isn't even of the right tribe. So the Mosaic law is set aside right here. Because we got a new high priest who was completed forever. See? So now the question, because he, he said, okay, well, law's done. Ouch. Mouse. The law's done. Okay, well, then what about the Jews? This was the promise to the Jews that there's going to be a new covenant to them. It's being inaugurated through the new covenant to us. We are the bridge of time back to them. And that's the theme of Hebrews 8 through Hebrews 10, 15, 10 17. You're going to have to read that yourself. In between is Hebrews 9, which is saying that a new will gets executed. See? He didn't use the law. He, he He's the, the lamb without spot and blemish. Okay, so how much more the blood of Christ He's the mediator of a new covenant. See? See, 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 see. The new covenant to us, based on Hebrews 2, based on Psalm 110. Replacing the angels, the, the, the demons, not Israel. And Israel's new covenant promise, that was in Jeremiah 31, which is how he began Hebrews 8, is received through the agency of him, using us to bridge time. Everything vests in Christ. There is no horizontal here at all. You don't derive, we don't derive from the Mosaic Law. That's horizontal. We derive from Christ. That's vertical. They derive from God also vertical. So see, Christ unites two verticals, but they're still in Him. They unite in Him. He's the horizontal, not us to them. Or them to us. He beat Satan. Not we beat Satan. We're in him. He beat Satan. They're in Christ, the Old Testament people. We're not in them and they're not in us. Two walls. Joined at Christ. That was Ephesians 2. Okay? So, for this reason, he's the mediator of a new covenant. Yeah, to us. Since a death has taken place, we can get the eternal inheritance. We got a different inheritance from them. We got a different covenant, different rules. It's basically the opposite of the Mosaic Law. And we rule forever. And we are bride of Christ. That's the only tangential um, likeness to what Israel had. But, her, but that particular promise was not like the rest of the promises in Abraham. That was not a promise made to Abraham. All the promises made to Abraham are still due to the Jews. They're still future, period. The promise made to Christ was different. The promise made to Christ was that he have a kingdom. That's Psalm 110, replacing the demons. Psalm 110, Hebrews 1 2. So that has, there has to be a priesthood. That's a new covenant, see? New covenant. There has to be a new priesthood. There has to be new terms. And that's us. Any Jew who believes in Christ is part of this new covenant. And by the way, using wordplay from Hebrews 8, the promise to the Jews, the promise to the Jews of their own new covenant in the tribim millennium, the third wall, or fourth wall really, 
will be fulfilled by means of truth bridging. You know, you got four walls. If you don't have four walls and they're not connected, then you don't have a building. Remember I said in the last increment, first wall, Adam to Abram. Second wall, Abram to Christ. Third wall, church built on Christ, Ephesians 2.10. Fourth wall, the trip. Trib and millennial people. Okay, well how are you going to get that fourth wall built if there's not a third wall? That's the problem. The bridge is out, the mixed metaphors, because Israel rejected Christ. Okay, so now the bride of Christ changes to church, which bridges time back to Israel's time that's still owed her, because that time is part of the promise to Abraham and Moses and David. They're all dead now. There are future promises made to them which have not yet been fulfilled. Covenant theology, therefore, is not completely, how do you want to call it, wrecked. But covenant theology is based on replacement theology, and they're ignoring this. We have our own new covenant. It is not based on Israel's covenant. It is a third wall. And the fourth wall is the trib millennial wall, which is also the property of Christ as king of the Jews. The millennium's promised to him. So if you're busy in replacement theology, look how retarded you are. You're ignoring the whole book of Hebrews. You're ignoring the fact that the, the, the millennium and the tribulation are promises to the Jews that are based on the promises to Abraham, who's dead, Moses, who's dead, David, who's dead. Christ who's dead. They're all Jews. God says that Israel will be his kingdom forever. Yeah, and that's only one of them. We are a separate kingdom based on the beating of the angels in Hebrews 2 at the cross. Psalm 110 is the promise of that. Our covenant highlighted in blue in the lower left hand corner is coming from that, not coming from the Jews. It's a different covenant, different group, different kingdom, different victory, battlefield royalty. This was not promised to the Jews. It could have been. They could have gotten it. But they said no. The way they could have gotten it was through brideship. Brideship was not promised to anybody but Christ. So Christ has the right to determine who he marries. He marries church. Any Jew alive during the period of church is in that covenant. And by the way, church is the bridge to the Jewish new covenant for the tribulation and the millennium, which was previously promised, completed, and set up in the whole bit at the cross also. Because it's promised to Christ. The king of the Jews. Got that? So see how retarded covenant theology is. This book is really very plain when you go through it. It starts out with Christ versus the angels. Yeah, well, duh. Psalm 110, right here. Christ versus the angels. Operation Footstool is our time now. So because of that, we better pay close attention to the salvation we got. And then he goes back to the angel thing again. Okay? We haven't seen everything put into subjection to him yet. See, the context is not the Jews, is it? The context is the angels. Hebrews 1 and 2 is about what? Christ versus angels. Duh! How retarded do you have to be not to understand that? Okay? Now, if church didn't exist, then it could have been Israel who was to be awarded the bride kingdom thing under the Psalm 110 covenant separation. But that's not the same thing as a, as a covenant to the Jews. It's different. It's a covenant to Christ. Psalm 110 is addressed to Christ. It's not addressed to Israel. But he's also king of the Jews. Okay? And if the Jews had accepted Christ after he paid, then the Jews and everybody else who was alive after Christ, same story now, will be part of that covenant. But they didn't believe in him. Okay, so he died. Everybody who believes in him now is part of this covenant. See? 
He beat the devil. This isn't the same as Israel. He completed the law, Romans 10, 4. This isn't the same as Israel. It's its own covenant. So that's why you got Hebrews 3, 1, a reminder, well, you know what? During the old days, hear his voice now. He's drawing parallel. Just like in Hebrews 8, he's drawing parallel to the new covenant, but they're two different things. If they ignored under the Old Testament, don't harden your hearts. That's the same warning to us today as applied to them. But we got our own covenant today just like they had their own covenant then. See, two covenants, two walls, parallel. That's why he's using Old Testament stuff to remind them. Hi. If this was true before, it's certainly more true now. We got this higher covenant based on being Satan. Okay, so here's promise, promise of inheritance. As long as the promise remains of entering his rest, we got a new rest. Again, parallel, not the same. It's post-cross. He completed the law. We got a new covenant. Okay, but certain things, you know, something borrowed, something blue, something old, something new. Okay, well, the old rule was they won't enter my rest if they don't learn my word. Well, we got a new rest and a new covenant, but the same rule. God is consistent in his justice. Seventh, number of promise. That's why he's using it. It's a play on words here. See, if you're retarded in your theology and you're all hung up on the Jews, and you read this, you're going to think it's the same covenant as to the Jews, and that you replace them. Which means that you are ignoring the fact that, hello, he's not talking about the Jews here. That's the comparison to angels. Different group. Hello. Again, Hebrews 2. Different group. Hello. Different promise. Subjection to his feet. This is about beating the devil. Not the Jews. See? Lower than angels. He's not talking about the Jews there. So if you cherry pick and you want to misapply Hebrews 1 and 2 and just sort of ignore the fact that he's talking about an entirely different group, then when you get to Hebrews 3 where he's making an analogy to the old covenant, in other words, the justice rule was, listen to me, don't harden your hearts. Okay, well, but even though it's a new covenant based on a different group, based on post-cross, wouldn't this rule be the same for us too? Duh! But if you're not reading Hebrews 1 and 2 properly, you're going to read this and say, well, see, it's the same covenant. No, it's not. Same justice, same God, different group, higher covenant because he's post-cross now and he's victorious. Don't harden your heart. Well, that's exactly what they're doing. All the replacement theology people are hardening their heart. Like Pharaoh, they can't hear. So the very thing they accused the Jews of, going back to Romans 9, where this analogy was also done, the Jews are cut out because they hardened their hearts. They wouldn't listen like Pharaoh didn't listen. In that case, he was talking about they wouldn't listen to the gospel. Okay, but you might be saved, but you're hardening your heart to the post-salvation covenant. You don't even know what it is. You're too busy focused on the Jews. Even though Romans 10.4 told you that law was set aside. Well, Hebrews 7 and Romans 10.4 told you Christ fulfilled the law. Hebrews 7, the law is set aside now. Hello, we got new law. Okay, so today, hear this new law that I told you about. Based on a different group in Hebrews 1 and 2. Because the writer of Hebrews is writing to people who still believe they were under the old law. Just like, you know... Replacement theology thinks they replaced the old people. No. There ain't no old law no more. There is no replacement of what doesn't exist. We didn't exist, church. We can't replace something that did exist. We didn't exist. Something that doesn't exist can't replace something that did. The Old Testament existed already. We did not exist. We're not being developed now to replace something that existed we're being developed now to replace something that said no. What said no? Demons. That's why he introduced it. 
Hebrews 1 and 2, angels, not Israel. But, like he said to Israel, because Israel is a replacement of the people in the land, don't harden your heart. If you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. Don't harden your heart to what the new covenant is. See? He's drawing a parallel. This is where Israel went wrong in the Old Testament. This is where church is going wrong in the New Testament. They were not able to answer the promise. This post-salvation. He's not talking about loss of salvation. You can't lose your salvation. Of course, if you're retarded and can't read the Bible, you'll think you can. Okay? See? Promise of entering his the rest. They were already saved, the Jews, when they went into the land. They were just about to go into the land. This was their inheritance in addition to them being saved. It's the same, same parallel. Different covenant being paralleled to the Old Testament. Because God is still just. The same warnings he gave to them, he's giving to us. So you won't get the post-salvation inheritance. You're not going to get it. Because you're not paying attention to what covenant is. You're too busy focused on the Old Testament. Because you're looking at these verses in the Old Testament and you're not reading the message that he's warning you about, the parallel. You're distorting it to say, see, it's the same covenant. No, it's not. He says new. New. How many times do we have to see this? See, when he said new covenant, he made the first obsolete. No. Now, at this point, I think I want to stop because I, I'm, I'm totally shocked at how retarded replacement theology is. That it can't recognize this is a different group. It can't recognize this is a different group. See? Descendant to Abraham. See? You're descendant based on faith, yeah, but it's not the same group that you replace. You're not going to replace Abraham. The promises are to Abraham. You don't replace him. Alright? But you can see how they could read this book, and if they want to keep on saying they replace the Jews, they can actually twist the meaning of all this. But you have to be really bad off to replace that. How do you twist that? That's not a promise made to the Jews. That's a promise made to Christ. It's a different kingship, a different kingdom, a different covenant. Psalm 110 is not promised to the Jews. The Jews could have gotten it, but it's eschatological because it's promised to Christ. The Jews could inherit that promise only if, only if, Christ first got it. You got that. It's a promise made to Christ. Well, the promise made to Christ can't turn on until there is a Christ, number one, and number two, until he does his side of the contract. So, the Jews were not the object of that contract. They could have come in after, after he fulfilled his side of the contract, post-cross. So it is not part of the Mosaic Law. It is not part of Israel. Israel could have gotten in on it after the cross. But she didn't believe. So Matthew 22, he's going to go out to the highways and byways. Vashti refused to believe. And that's us, church. And any Jew who happens to be out on those highways and byways, well, they believe in Christ. They can call themselves Jew. They can call themselves Buddhist. They can call themselves Messianic. They're still part of the body of Christ. They're still part of Christ, just like us. And that's what he's going to be saying about us. That's what he's saying now. See? Both he who sanctifies and those who are sanctified are all from one Father. That's He's talking to uh, John 17. He's not ashamed to call us brothers. That was never said of the Old Testament people. Calling us brothers? That was never said of the Old Testament. Messiah didn't call anybody a brother in the Old Testament. See, it's higher. I will proclaim your name. This, was, this is from David. Okay? 
since the children share in flesh and blood, he himself likewise partook of the same. This is Christ coming down, that through death he might render powerless the devil. See? Battle over the devil. Not Israel. Okay? Now, the writer of Hebrews is writing to Jews who are sticking to the old law. Try to tell them why the old law doesn't work no more. So that's why he's putting that in there. And that's why he's also doing this. But when people who are replacement theology read this, they say, well, I see it's the same covenant. It's not. He's trying to explain to them why it's not. It's a new covenant, see? He is counted of more glory than Moses, just as much as the builder of the house has more honor than the house. See? He's higher than Moses. So it isn't the Mosaic law. It's higher. It's better. It's more. So see, but just as during the Old Testament, there's a warning to, you know, heed the rest. It's a different covenant. It's a higher covenant. See, that's what that says. But it's the same warning. See, if you're going to be a replacement theology, theologian, and you're not really a theologian, really, you're just incompetent, you have to take this part and ignore it in order to call this part the same covenant as the old, in which case you're making the same mistake as the people to whom the writer of Hebrews was writing. You're not hearing his voice. You are hardening your hearts. You are provoking him. You go astray in your heart. You do not know his ways, so you do not enter his rest. That's the curse for anti-Semitism. And that's, I think, where I'm going to leave off. The biggest curse that God can curse you with is to not understand Bible. And this is a real good passage to show the problem. See, Christ is better than Moses. It's not related to the law. It's a different covenant. Of course, the rest of the book is on that topic. But the warning is therefore the same. He. Or, you don't enter the rest. You're going astray in your heart. You're hardening your heart like Pharaoh did. You're as guilty as the people in Romans 9 that you think you replaced. Because you're cherry picking verses because you want to beat the Jews. Okay, then you're emulating the very Jews that you say are so bad. That's, I mean, come on, look at the screen. Hebrews 3, it's right there in front of you. Better Covenant right here. It's the theme of the book that he started talking about angels in Hebrews 1 and 2 but the warning is the same and if you're going to be busy saying how bad the Jews were then you too are cherry picking, you're ignoring this it's not the same covenant at all, not even related to them it's related to the angels and you are instead emulating the Jews that you are so focused on and trying to replace therefore you are retarded Therefore, replacement theology is retarded because it can't read Hebrews 1, which is talking about God and angels. Can't read Hebrews 2, which is still talking about God and angels beating Satan. See, last word in blue at the bottom left of the screen. I'm not talking about Israel. But when it starts talking about Israel, what does it first say? Oh, well, see, there's this better covenant because Christ is higher than Moses. See, right here? Higher covenant, see, right there. Blah, bald, 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 bald text. It isn't related to Israel, it's related to Christ. Ephesians 2.10, we are built on Christ, not on Israel. Hebrews was written in 68 AD, about um, maybe uh, 10 years after Paul, 12 years after Paul. Word Ephesians. So, but the warning is going to be the same. See, if you can't tell that this is a different covenant, therefore not related to the Jews, and you just look at this and say, well, see, it's, just, it's talking about the same covenant as to the Jews, then you know what you're proving? You're proving you've hardened your heart. You're proving you're going astray in your heart. You're proving you don't know God's ways. And therefore, you won't enter his rest. You will be cursed for your anti-Semitism by not understanding the Bible. Baldly, plainly here, proven they don't understand. 
peace out